I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I'm getting so many more requests than usual to talk about body acne. It might be the stress of the pandemic or the fact that we're headed into summer and we wanna show a little bit more skin, but people are really sick of dealing with the bumps on their chest and back and shoulders and butt. So I'm gonna go into my favorite tips and tricks for controlling body acne and also give some product recommendations. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis. I am a board certified dermatologist and I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So what causes body acne? It's actually not that different than facial acne. You have a pore that gets clogged. There's oil stimulation, usually driven by hormones and also genetic factors. And then acne causing bacteria come in and create inflammation. The exact same as what happens on the face. The big difference is that the oil glands on our back are more dense and they can be larger. And so the bumps can be more intense, bigger, and have more potential for scarring. The other type of body bump that I tend to see on the chest and back, shoulders, and, and really the butt more than anything is something called folliculitis. And folliculitis just means inflammation of the hair follicle that can be caused by friction. It can be due to bacteria or yeast or fungal organisms getting into the hair follicle and causing inflammation. And the tricky thing is acne and folliculitis can look very similar. And a lot of patients come into my office and they're like in such distress. Like, I don't know if it's acne. I don't know if it's folliculitis. That's okay. You don't have to. That's what your dermatologist is for. The other thing is that you tend to treat them quite similarly. And so it's less about discerning folliculitis versus acne and more about recognizing the fact that you have these body bumps and intervening in a way that's meaningful so that they don't cause long-term problems for you like pigmentation and scarring. I know I said face acne and body acne are really similar and they're caused by the same things and largely that is true. But one thing that plays more of a factor, I think in body acne and folliculitis more than it does in face acne is friction. So friction from clothing, like tight fitting clothing, rubbing on the body is going to make your hair follicles more likely to clog up, which is sort of the first step in driving acne. Same goes for like tight fitting leggings or wearing a backpack or lying down on a yoga mat. All of those things increase friction and friction drives acne. All right, let's get into strategies to combat body acne and folliculitis and treatment because I feel like I feel like that's really what you're here for. One thing I wanna say before we get into over-the-counter treatments is that if you have acne that is scarring, I strongly, strongly encourage you to reach out to a dermatologist and strategize about what to do. Oftentimes, prescription medications can be incredibly helpful in kind of shutting down acne quickly. And I just, it's sad, but I see a lot of patients in my practice who have put off seeing a dermatologist or they didn't have access for one reason or another, or they were told they could just fix it with over-the-counter things. And they've ended up with really bad scarring that largely could have been prevented. So I'm not saying that to scare anyone, but just know that there are some types of acne that really do require professional intervention. And just, if you feel like your acne is more severe than average, see a dermatologist. Really the first pillar in addressing body acne and folliculitis is behavioral modification. You can use all of the awesome products and ingredients in the world, but if you don't change some of the main things that are driving the acne, it's unlikely to get significantly better. So what can you do? One, when you work out, really figure out how sweat is affecting you and how friction are affecting you. Moisture wicking clothing can be really helpful. So performance gear can be a little pricier, but it's generally worth it. The other thing is you don't wanna sit around in your sweaty workout clothes all day. Now, I'm not saying I'm totally guilt-free of this. I've definitely lounged around after a Peloton ride or two, but it's really important to get out of your sweaty sports bra or your t-shirt or your tight-fitting pants and into the shower. One, because tight-fitting clothing really increases the occlusion and sort of the friction over your pores and is gonna make them more likely to be clogged. But two, the longer that sweat is trapped against the skin, the softer your outer layer of skin becomes and the more easily penetrated by bacteria and yeast it gets. So it's really important to get in the shower, wash off, and then dry your skin. You also wanna make sure that you're wiping down your workout equipment on a regular basis. So just like, When's the last time you washed your Peloton seat or your yoga mat? Maybe do it a little bit more often. And then, you know, when you're not working out, wearing loose fitting clothing, like friction is the enemy of body acne. Sweating is the enemy of body acne. So if you can wear looser, breezier tops, dresses, pants, sleep commando, 
All of those things are going to decrease friction on the skin and increase the likelihood of getting better control of your body acne. One thing I get asked a lot is if I have body acne or if I have folliculitis, should I be like scrubbing or using a loofah or using some type of exfoliating beads? And really the answer is no. Physical exfoliation is not the friend of acne and it just increases irritation and disrupts the barrier on the outside of the skin without adding much improvement. So although scrubbing beads can feel really good and feel like they're doing something effective, they're often just causing additional irritation. So I really encourage people to rely on other products to make their acne better. Once you've made these good habits, it is so much easier to maintain clear skin. All right, so let's get into some of my favorite things, which is like the products, the ingredients that really help with body acne. And I'm also I'm also gonna to talk to you about how to best use these products because a lot of times people have all of the right stuff on their shelf, they're just using it improperly so they're not getting all the benefits. First up is the ingredient benzoyl peroxide. If you have ever seen a doctor about acne, they have probably recommended a product with benzoyl peroxide and that is because it is so consistently effective and very well studied. We know that it helps with oil control, it is anti-inflammatory and it is antimicrobial, meaning that it helps kill acne causing bacteria. My favorite way to incorporate benzoyl peroxide into a body acne routine or butt folliculitis routine is in the form of a body wash. And I prefer body washes over sort of like leave on preparations of benzoyl peroxide for a few different reasons. One, benzoyl peroxide has this very annoying thing that it does, which is that it bleaches fabrics like towels or sheets or clothing. So you're much less likely to have residual benzoyl peroxide on your body if you're using it in the form of a wash rather than in a leave on product. The other thing is that it can be a little bit irritating. So I'd much rather people have this sort of short contact time where you use it as a wash and leave it on for a few minutes and then rinse it off rather than use it in a gel or a cream where it's gonna be staying on your skin all day long. And lastly, I, I just find that my patients are much more compliant when it's in the form of a wash. It's something they leave in their shower and instead of using their typical body wash, they use a benzoyl peroxide body wash instead and it works great. Probably one of the biggest reasons why people don't find success with benzoyl peroxide body washes is because they're not leaving them on the skin long enough for them to be effective. So they really should be sitting on the skin for two to five minutes before rinsing. And that's actually a really long time. One suggestion I often give to my teenagers is to pick a song that's about four minutes long and play it while you're in the shower. And you're gonna put your benzoyl peroxide body wash on at the beginning of that song and then not rinse it off till the end of that song. The other thing that you can do is you can actually put your benzoyl peroxide on before the shower. So you can lather it up, get it applied either on your own if you have flexible shoulders or get a parent or a friend to help you stay outside of the shower for a few minutes while it sort of penetrates and then you can rinse it off as soon as you get into the shower and kind of finish up your routine in there. There are a lot of great benzoyl peroxide washes out there. Sometimes they're labeled as face washes, sometimes they're labeled as body washes. It doesn't really matter. Just get a wash that has benzoyl peroxide in it. Some of my favorites include the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cleanser. That one has 4% benzoyl peroxide. The Neutrogena Clear Pore Cleanser. That one has 3.5% benzoyl peroxide. And then the brand Panoxyl has a couple of different benzoyl peroxide washes, one that's 4% and also one that's 10%. They are all wonderful. The strength of the benzoyl peroxide does not really matter. So as you go up higher in strength of percentage with benzoyl peroxide, so you know 4% versus 10%, the irritation risk increases, but the efficacy doesn't really increase that much. So just know that if you're using a low percentage strength benzoyl peroxide, it's still going to be effective as long as you're using it properly. If someone tells me that they have body acne or butt folliculitis and they are like, what is the one product or one ingredient that I should be using? It's benzoyl peroxide. So if you're going to invest in something, invest in one of those. Another category of ingredients that can be helpful for body acne are retinoids. And retinoids are really vitamin A derived molecules that make cell turnover more regular, so they make pores less likely to clog. Now, not all retinoids are created equal, and most of the ones that are approved for fighting acne are prescription strength. If you want more info on that, I have a whole YouTube video about it. But there is a retinoid that is available over the counter called Adapalene. And this one actually is approved for the treatment of acne and can be super effective. Probably the most popular brand of Adapalene that's available over the counter is Differin. La Roche-Posay also makes a really nice one. The way you would use this is after showering, after drying off completely, you would apply a super thin layer over the affected areas, whether that's your shoulders or your back or your tushy. The thing to keep in mind though is 
It is not a spot treatment. And really nothing I'm talking about today is a spot treatment. You need to apply it broadly to the areas that you tend to break out because you're not just treating active acne bumps, you're really preventing future ones from ever making it to the surface. The biggest downside to using retinoids is really their side effects. And the main one is irritation. However, I will tell you, they are much more irritating when used on the face than they are on the chest and the back. That being said, I still recommend that when you're introducing a retinoid into your routine that you start just once or twice a week. And if you're able to tolerate that without irritation, then moving up to three times a week and eventually four times a week, you don't need to go in and use it every single night right out of the gate. That's gonna really increase your risk for irritation and it might even flare your acne. So low and slow is the way to start retinoids and eventually you will be able to use them every night and it's gonna help a lot in decreasing the number of acne bumps that you get. One thing I forgot to say about adapalene is that it can help fade post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So a lot of times people have broken out, their acne is healed, but they're left with this little footprint, a little dark mark from where they previously had an acne breakout. And retinoids, because they help with cell turnover and they also can inhibit a little bit of pigment synthesis, you actually get improvement in dark marks and brightening over time if you use it consistently. Another helpful ingredient that can help fight acne is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid and really works by diving into the pores, breaking up oil and dead skin cells and helping with exfoliation. It's pretty gentle and mild, especially in the form of a body wash, which is usually how I'll have people use it for body acne. The Inky List and Neutrogena both make a really nice 2% salicylic acid cleanser. The other type of salicylic acid product I like is, this is so old school, it's the Stridex pads in the red box, those little pads impregnated with a salicylic acid 2% solution. And I love this for my teens who play baseball or soccer who are definitely not gonna go home and shower right away. They just leave them in their gym bag or their sports bag and in the car on the way home, they just take out a little pad and sort of like wipe off their face, wipe off their shoulders, wipe off their back. And it's a really great way to just sort of remove some of that initial debris before they get in the shower. The last ingredient I'm going to talk about is I feel like it's a little bit of a dermatology secret, but I do recommend it for my patients who are really struggling. And that is an antiperspirant called aluminum chloride. Aluminum chloride essentially prevents sweating when applied topically. And that can be really helpful, especially for tushy folliculitis where sweat and heat really drive that problem. So the way you do this is you apply it at night and you let it sort of sit overnight when you're not sweating and then it works the next day to prevent sweating. One brand that I really like is Certain Dry. They make a 12 and percent aluminum chloride sort of roll on antiperspirant. If you go much higher than 12 and percent, you really start risking getting a lot of irritation in the area. Now this might not be the first thing I start with when treating body acne or folliculitis, but it certainly is something that can help too. The last thing I'll say is if your bumps are not responding to all of the treatments I just recommended, it is so important to seek out help from a dermatologist. One, your bumps might not be acne or folliculitis. You might have a different diagnosis going on that requires an entirely different treatment. And two, you might have acne or folliculitis, but just a type or a variant that requires prescription medication, and there is nothing wrong with that. Folliculitis and acne are skin diseases, and sometimes they need prescription medication. Do you struggle with body acne? Tell me what you've tried in the comments below. And also, if you have had body acne and you've got it under control and you have a product recommendation, I would love to hear all about it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and come and follow me on Instagram at Dr. Samantha Ellis, and I'll see you next time.